to Mississippi Outdoors. I'm Amanda Mills. And I'm Kevin Meacham. Thanks for joining us. You know, Amanda, Mississippi has so many opportunities out there for hunters just to get out and enjoy the great outdoors. That's right, Kevin, and some of the most dedicated hunters I know are duck hunters. You know, they brave the extreme cold and wind to do what they love. Yep. And in our first story, we head to Clay County to do just that as we fight the elements to get our limit of ducks. <laughs> Hey folks, this morning on Mississippi Outdoors, we're hunting in Clay County. Uh, we're hunting a pond. Uh, been a couple hundred birds in there the past few days, and uh, we got a little rain, a little wind this morning. We just hope they show up. I got a call from my buddy Justin, and he said, man, we're in the area. Uh, you know, we'd like to be able to film a good hunt in the morning. I said, well, man, we can try it. I know where there's a couple hundred birds. We went to a little loafing pond. Bird just kind of got on a feeding pattern at night uh, around here, and we get all of our gear together. Uh, I take Justin and Scooter down to the blind. We had a little just cane blind, and uh, man, just to see the reaction on these guys' face, man, they're like, man, I just, just not too sure about this. I told him, I said, trust me. Man, it was, uh, it was overcast. It was raining a little bit uh, on us and we had the wind coming hard out of the north and we were set up on the south side of the pond not good conditions really we knew that it was in a good enough spot and we had some really good shooters in the blind and i was confident you know we could make 40 yard shots we had the birds coming directly in from the north like they were sometimes they were cutting us short and sometimes they were coming right in the decoys and sometimes the wind was blowing so hard we would shoot and another bird would pick up and the wind would just kind of kind of bring it 10 more yards closer you know and that's all we needed good shot good shot you want to take it <laughs> I really enjoy the, the friendships and, and the, the fellowship that we have out there. We have Mr. Scott O'Brien, he owns the property. Uh, me and Scott have been duck hunting for about nine years now. And we've got David Lott, one of my dear friends. We had Captain Jim, uh, he's from Slidell, Louisiana. Man, he's been up for the past three years and we're just like family. And man, it's just a good group of guys. We just, we just enjoy duck hunting, we have a passion for it. Shoot him. Shoot Man, that Captain Jim, he is something. He will not shoot a ring neck. He is so picky. Uh, you know, it just, it cracks me up every time. I see one come in, you know, I may look over at him and tell him, uh, here comes a teal, here comes a teal, just trying to get him to shoot one. And he, he will not pick his gun up to shoot a ring neck. I mean, he just won't do it. So I was picking a cripple up uh, that had 
went over a, a bank, uh, went over there to, to uh, yeah. send my dog to get that bird, and I see a bird buzz the decoys, and I think Mr. David, I think David shot a couple times at him, or, or Scott, somebody did, and the bird circled around. I saw him coming. I, I just locked up, you know, and luckily the bird come over the top, and I threw up and made a, made a pretty good shot on him, and it ended up being a redhead. Gorgeous redhead! I get back to the blind, and I say, guys, you know, I just shot a really pretty mature, uh, fully plumed redhead. And Captain Jim said, well, I thought it was a ring neck. I didn't pick my gun up to shoot it. That's a pretty redhead. You know, there's plenty of food in the bottom. They've been using it for years. I mean, before I was born, you know, before my parents were born, before anybody was born, these birds have imprinted in this bottom. They feed and they come up here to rest. How was your shot right there? You know, we're just fortunate enough to have this pond and we just love it, man. It's, it's not all about the kill of uh, the harvest. Uh, it's, it's all about pulling up to that duck hole two or three days before that and seeing several hundred birds, you know, and, and that's what gets us excited about it. Take them. It's not a flyway like the Delta Central Flyway or anything like that, but uh, we, luckily we have the Tom Bigby Waterway and, and that is a flyway, you know, the birds, birds pull off of that to feed and uh, it's just, you know, a hundred years, the birds just come into this area right here. You know, they've just imprinted. They've imprinted on these holes and we don't over hunt them. We don't pressure them. We take care of them and they show up when we hunt them. Yeah, how you like it? I had to have a deal. You got to make up. That was a good shot. Good shot. Trump. I began duck hunting in 2009. I had a good friend of mine uh, that introduced me. He had a really nice lab, and I said, man, you know, one day, you know, I enjoy hunting. I really like this duck hunting. I said, one day I want to have a dog like Jake. The next year, I got my own got my own dog, started training him, went into waterfowl hunting, and just, just absolutely fell in love with it from that point on. There we go, Scotty. These dogs are athletes, they love it. They love it just as much as I do. When I wake up in the mornings, I go out there and get those dogs out of the kennel, and they're just fired, just as fired up as I am. We had to reach reach on up there. Take him. It all comes down to the migration, the weather, mother nature is the main, main reason that the ducks get pushed down here. Uh, we've got several different duck holes. I mean, we've got three good producing duck holes that we hunt and uh, we just alternate them throughout the week, you know, and, and we give them rest. Uh, we honestly don't go hunt unless we see a, a several hundred birds, I mean. That's it, I mean, we, we may go out there and check it one day, it may be 80 birds on it, the next day it may be 200 birds on it, and then, you know, you just let that let it sit there and rest, you know, and, and you know, two or three days later, with that number of birds on there, it's just drawing more birds in, and uh, we're letting them rest, and we go out there and see, you know, four or 500, that gets us pumped up, we're ready to hunt it. We just enjoy taking different people, introducing them to duck hunting. Look at that boy go. Just getting them started into it and just seeing the excitement that they have and just sharing that love and passion that we have for the waterfowl, there's just nothing like it. In our next story, the outdoors crew is headed up the mighty Mississippi River to do some bow fishing for some huge alligator gar.
Here we are, Mississippi Outdoors, and this weekend we got something special for you. We are bow fishing along the Mississippi River, and we got Hugh Skinner here to kind of explain exactly what are we doing this weekend. Guys, this is the biggest bow fishing tournament that has ever been thrown on the Mississippi That's River. That's what I heard now. Um, we got a lot of boats showing up. We got the biggest payouts in Mississippi history, over $17,000 in prizes and payouts. Can they put in anywhere on the river? Absolutely, as long as it connects to the main river, public boat ramp, you're good to go. Um, we're launching at six, and weigh-in is back here at eight o'clock in the morning, and it's going to be an interesting way in. <laughs> so 8 o'clock back here at Eagle Lake is where we're doing all the, the takeoff and the, the weigh-in. So when they come in in the morning, somebody said they're doing the 10 biggest fish? Big 10 is the weight. Okay, so 10 total, biggest fish. Total weight of the Big 10 fish, okay. absolutely. Big fish okay. and long nose pots. So the longest long nose and the heaviest fish. First, second, and third, 10 big fish, absolutely. Man, that's going to be awesome. First big bow fishing tournament on the river is going to be pretty cool. It is. I'm excited about it. My name's Stephen Carter. We're here at the Muddy Waters Bow Fishing Tournament. Uh, it's probably one of the biggest tournaments that we've had in Mississippi. Uh, I've probably been bow fishing for 10 years and there's a lot of stiff competition and a lot of rivalries and good fun. So it, it's just a, a camaraderie sport that a lot of people can get together and do. So. Man, it's the best of both worlds. It's hunting and fishing all added together. Uh, and at the same time, you know, you're, you're in the river systems and the lakes of invasive species, stuff like that. So we're trying to do our part to save our bass one fish at a time, you know. We uh, usually shoot a bunch of big tournaments every year. And uh, we heard this one was going to be a good one, so we drove over and got to check it out on Mississippi. My first time here, but I just love it. Everything changes all the time. You never know what to expect. You're fighting water, mother nature. Everything, it's just awesome. It's the best of both worlds, fishing and hunting. As long as the water's connected to the Mississippi River, anywhere between Memphis and New Orleans, you can uh, bow fish. And primarily, uh, the target fish is gonna be the uh, Asian carp, uh, which is a really good thing because they are a very, very big problem, nuisance alien species and hurting a lot of the water systems that we have around here. That's not what I normally do. I bow fish, I was bow fishing when other people weren't. And we, uh, South Louisiana, we chase redfish. Uh, so this is a very different thing for me. We came down a couple of weeks ago, heard about this little lake here outside of Woodville, uh, and scouted it out. We saw some carp in it, jumping in the boat. Nobody that's been on this boat has ever shot carp. We've only shot redfish. So we've got a lot of experience shooting these, shooting fish, but not a lot with carp. So it's gonna really, it's gonna be a big challenge. <laughs> a little warm up. I think it's gonna take a lot bigger one than that, but. Oh, Ooh, good try. I got him. Oh, oh. I got him. Oh. Hold on, I got him, I got him. Hold on, easy, 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 easy. I got him, I got him. I got him. I'm, I got okay, him. come straight in. We can enter that one in the long nose division. Is that long nose? Yeah, long nose. Good shot. I don't, I don't know, they get pretty long. I want to say get like four foot. Oh, they got him. Uh, I know, I know. Look, I'm, the current's got me. Man, there's something else over there, too. All right, just flip him in the boat. Not by the air. Okay. No, no. <laughs> we got oh, 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 oh. Uh, this, is, this is so foreign to us. We're used, we're used to looking at the bottom. You know, when we're down there, we can see shell bottoms, mud bottoms, and you're looking in very, very shallow water, and you're picking the fish up off the bottom. These fish are suspended. And it's really hard. It's, it's, it's weird looking to us. Alligator gar. Hey, oh, that was a good one. Hold on. We're going we're gonna to chill here for a second. There was a good one went back over here, but I don't know how far it went. What is it? <laughs> what was it, Barry? Carp. We've been going in and out of the shallows and the deep, and in the shallow spots, there's some smaller fish, but they're easier to hit. So we went in the shallows and picked up a few that way, and early on, we were trying to shoot some in the deep because they're bigger and they're jumping. Okay, everybody, no! The ones that are jumping are bigger, and uh, we hit one and didn't get it into the boat, and then we went to the shallows, and shot a few and now we're back out in deep water trying to kill some bigger ones uh, but they are so hard to hit 
you have just a split second whenever they jump out and they're really unpredictable and you're kind of halfway worried about getting your head taken off. It's a struggle so far, but we still have quite a few hours to try to get 10. So that's the goal. Ah, good. Man, these things are so powerful, huh? Oh, yeah. They freaking jump out the water like 12 feet in the air, clear over the boat. Oh. Two of them jumped tandem over there. Hey, somebody could say, like, one's about to jump. Right before you jump, I feel like I can hit him. <laughs> I got him on. Let him get on all the way to the top. Now, there you go. Got one in him? Everybody got some in him? All right. All right. That's why we put one another in him. Hey, you in him too? Yeah, we both are. All right. All right. Somebody reach in there and grab him by his whatever. Woo! We didn't get skunk on big silver car. All right, we got to do that nine more times, guys, and we don't have to hang our heads in absolute I'm just a late shame. Bloomer. <laughs> well, <laughs> we've been at this now for I guess about four hours, three and a half hours. About five and more days of tournament. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you you can see in our box, we got one halfway decent, one in the shallow, and we finally shot one out the air. The goal is to get nine more out the air. We think now, 10. All we need is seven. Seven? Hey. Yeah, if that needle guard does count. Yeah. Long oh, I know, but we want 10 of those oh Mondo yeah. flyers. Yeah. Yeah, nine more of them big chunks. It's all about momentum, and it's going our way right now because we got one. Right. I'm going to tell you, they're very, very different from redfish. At least, uh, if you get a redfish that size and you shoot him through the ribs, that air is not going to pull out. Yeah, these things are definitely soft. These are a lot softer than those. Uh -huh. And we learned that. We learned that the hard way on the first fish. We hit one, we got to get multiple errors, and yeah. they pull out pretty easy. That was a good opportunity. Oh. Nice. Wait, I got it. I got it. <laughs> See, I think that's fair. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting, 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 getting. Drive the bow up. Uh, you ready? He's in the tail. Oh, he's in the tail. Get him, Bear. Good well. job. Put another one in him, Dad. I think we're getting it, guys. Yeah. I really do. I'm going to get back in this spot because that's where all the mojo is. I might have shot under him. I did. Good shot, Hayden. Good shot, buddy. Can't push and go right up through the middle right. Now I'm gonna die. Motor, 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 motor. Well, that sounded solid. <laughs> I don't know what more you want than that. Dad, 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 dad. dad, dad. Oh, oh. Good one in there. Got it. Good job. Good job. That's a little bit of overkill, but we'll take it. Man, it was, uh, we're not used to fooling with carp at all. Uh, there were some challenges. If we'd have been prepared for, I think we'd have done better. These are really, really big fish. They're powerful. They're softer than the redfish that we typically chase. So we lost, uh, we lost uh, half a dozen really big carp. We had, a, I think, we had a good strategy, just getting on a, uh, just getting on a uh, six and a half, seven miles an hour, and just staying alert and shooting them. But that big fish going in the opposite direction of you, trying to get the motor shut down. 
if I had to do it again, we'd probably go with a float system. Uh, if we had a float system, I think we'd probably have another, like I said, a good half a dozen, another 150 pounds uh, of carp than we have. But it, we had, outside of it, this was more fun, uh, as fun as any boat fishing I've ever done. Uh, it, it's like uh, you're waiting on a jack-in-the-box, except you don't have the music building up to it. You're just sitting there waiting for it to pop out. And uh, we just had a blast. My guys, my two sons and my brother, uh, just we always uh, enjoy doing these sort of things together and having them out here doing it as well uh, uh, was just icing on the cake. We had a ball. I don't, win, lose, or draw, but we won. We, we had a great evening, uh, shot some really, really big fish, and, uh, and learned something. So if we do it again, we might do better. Finally tonight, high school bass fishing has really grown in popularity throughout the state. We get to ride along with a group of kids fishing a tournament on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Come up and get it. Go get them. When you think of bass fishing, what comes to mind? Usually it's men and women fishing for pleasure or competition. But in today's world, more high school students are joining bass fishing clubs to sharpen their skills. My name's John Donaway. I'm actually in the Murky Water Bass Masters, and we've been asked to come down here and help you get some film footage of the high school bass tournament this morning. Looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day and a lot of fish will be caught. Do not take chances. This tide is really low, like Mr. Carr said. There's sandbars in the channel. Be real careful, don't ride too close to people. Sportsmanship. Do not pull within 100 yards of somebody and start fishing. Do unto others that you would have them to do unto you. The number four ladies team in the nation right there, old camp and ready. Yeah, follow that boat. Good job, come on up fish too. I'm just trying to just, just keep baiting the water. Keep baiting the water, keep grinding. Keep catching fish. What you gonna start with? Probably gonna start with shaggy head, crankbait, back in the, back in the ditches. Hey, you ain't gonna call me out like that. <laughs> I'm a boat captain and keep them in line. I let them do everything except when they do get in the bind on the trolling motor, I'll jump on the trolling motor and help them, but it's a great organization, it's for these kids. And college scholarships, you can fish for that. Uh, but the, the Bass Tass is a great organization for kids fishing. It's beautiful out here. You get to ride around, say some things you don't get to say sitting around the house, you know. You just gotta catch you them 10 pounders, you know, win them tournaments, you get the money. A lot of things like that. Oh, that's depth on me. Uh, the best thing about bass fishing is you just go out and see the pretty water and stuff. And the best thing about these competitions is you just meet new people every day. They have a lot that'll keep them not just entertained, but will teach them a lot about the outdoors and actually being outside and, and observing nature. If they can slow down just a little bit to look around, they will learn a lot. Double. We have placed top two, a lot of top tens, or a bunch of top 15. It's fun and you can make money. Yeah, they two away from the limit. I got mine already. That's a pretty fish. 
It's a great organization. You have fun. You get to do stuff that other people might not get to do around the world. There you go. We did all right. We called one time. We had five fish limit. We got a good three or four pounder. Outstanding kid. Definitely sportsmanship. And also, it just yeah, it adds another meaning to fishing. I, myself, I'm always competitive, and I love fishing. So putting them together, it's just, it's great. Folks, that's all the time we have for this week. We really hope you enjoyed the show. Please join us again next week for more exciting adventures. Until then, I'm Kevin Meacham. And I'm Amanda Mills. See, See ya, ya outdoors. outdoors. in the land.